Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell just loves to talk about his tools, that he has the tools to fight inflation. And one of those tools is something known as quantitative tightening, otherwise known as the destruction of money. And starting today, the Federal Reserve is destroying money. Today starts the Fed's QT, or quantitative tightening program. Now, most people don't deal with this on a daily basis, so they don't really understand what it is. We're going to talk about the mechanics of it, what they're actually going to be doing, what the effects of that on the economy are going to be, and we're going to see that we've actually been down this road before, and it didn't go so well. The difference is this time, the problem is much, much bigger. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and it is time to shrink my big melon of a head, and let's take a look at this chart right here, and what you are looking at is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. All right, this is all of the assets and the investments that the Federal Reserve Bank owns. And it's comprised mostly of U.S. Treasuries, otherwise known as government debt, and mortgage-backed securities, which is big piles of mortgages that are packaged up into a bond and sold to investors. Now, every time this chart moves up, what you're looking at is quantitative easing, where the Federal Reserve prints money out of thin air. Yes, that's what they do. And they go into the open market and they buy U.S. Treasuries or mortgage-backed securities. This has the effect of lowering interest rates and it's very stimulative to the economy. When you lower interest rates, it's easier for people to borrow so people can afford bigger houses, people can afford to invest in their businesses. It's very stimulative. The problem is that tends to cause inflation. And here we are amid the worst inflation since the 1970s because of all of this quantitative easing or money printing that was done after the global financial crisis and then after COVID. So right now what they're doing is they are gonna start quantitative tightening. They're gonna start moving this graph down. Now, we've only ever done quantitative tightening once before, and that was in 2017 and 2018, right around here in this time frame. And you can see we only made it a little bit more than a year before problems started, and this graph started shooting straight up. Now, just to be clear, what's going on, the Federal Reserve is going to be letting these assets roll off their balance sheet. They're not going to be going into the open market and selling these mortgage bonds or selling these U.S. Treasuries. These things are constantly maturing and being paid back. Now, typically what the Fed does is when these bonds get paid back, they take that money and they go right back into the market and they buy another one. So there's really no net change in the economy. However, what they're going to do this time is when they get paid back for the bond, they're going to just destroy that money. It's as simple as it sounds. That money ceases to exist. Now, that has the effect of lowering the money supply, and that's how they plan to fight inflation. Now, when you lower the money supply, but the money demand stays the same, that means the cost of money goes up, and the cost of money is interest rates. So this is going to have the effect of raising interest rates for U.S. Treasuries and for mortgage bonds. Now, this time around, when they do quantitative tightening, the Federal Reserve plans to start at $47.5 billion worth of tightening. So they'll let $30 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries mature, and they'll destroy that money. And then they'll let $17.5 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities mature, and they'll destroy that money for a combined $47.5 billion. They're going to do that for three months, and then their plan is to double it in September to $95 billion a month, where they'll be doing $60 billion in U.S. Treasuries and $35 billion in mortgage-backed securities. Now, just to put that in perspective, the last time they started quantitative tightening was in October of 2017. They started at just $10 billion a month, and then every three months, they increased it by another $10 billion until they ultimately got to about $50 billion a month in late 2019. So this time around, not only are they starting at a much higher amount right away, but they're going to increase that level a whole heck of a lot faster. So they're going to be sucking a lot of money out of the economy, more than they've ever done. And this is happening at a time when interest rates are already spiking and there's turmoil in the stock market. So if you want to see how this might end, again, we have to go back to recent history. We're going to shrink my melon of a head again. And take a look here. The last time we were engaged in quantitative tightening, starting in October of 2017 at $10 billion a month, if you remember in late 2018, right around October, November time frame, right where my cursor is, that's when we started to have some turmoil in the stock market. There was a bit of a stock market crash in the fall of 2018. Now, in order to address that crash, Jerome Powell came with his infamous Powell pivot, where he very rapidly went from raising interest rates to automatically lowering interest rates. Now, he stayed with the quantitative tightening, but when you lower interest rates, that's a very stimulative effect. So something was going wrong about halfway down this curve when we were starting quantitative tightening last time. We only made it about a year before something went bad. Now, keep in mind, back then, the economy, for all intents and purposes, was very good. 
Stocks were at all-time highs. Unemployment was very low. Everything was going well, and yet things started to go wrong. But we stayed with the quantitative tightening through the beginning of 2019. And then in September of 2019 was an event known as Repo Madness. And if you're alive right now, chances are Repo Madness is one of the most important days of your life, even though you may have never heard of it. See, Repo Madness happened on September 17th of 2019. While we were all sleeping, the overnight rate for repurchase agreements, which are these large short-term loans between banks, spiked as high as 10%, when they're typically down around a fraction of 1%. So what happened in September of 2019 is the supply of money got too tight because we were quantitative tightening and there was more demand for loans than there was cash to satisfy them. So what happens when demand is high and supply is low, price rises. So the interest rates, the price of money spiked in 2019 and that spooked the economy big time when we got that big overnight spike. And very rapidly, the Federal Reserve went from quantitative tightening to overnight quantitative easing. And that's why here in September of 2019, you see this curve starts to tick up again. That was right after the repo madness. Now, this was months before the unfortunate health situation that sent us all into lockdown. I want you to understand that most people don't realize that the Federal Reserve had already started printing money months before that happened. Now, you can see, obviously, when the pandemic hits and the Federal Reserve just absolutely opened the floodgates of quantitative easing, sent trillions of dollars into the economy, and then that continued all the way through last year when they started the talk of taper where the quantitative easing was slowed that was the taper the taper ended in march and now we're talking about tightening right away so i want to put this in perspective folks the last time we did any kind of quantitative tightening we started to cause problems in the economy right away and we started from a much stronger standpoint and we started at a much slower rate of tightening we only doing 10 billion dollars a month back in 2017 we gradually worked our way up to 50 billion a month and when we did that we broke the stock market and then we broke the bond market with the repo madness now the reason i say that is because this time around the balance sheet is much much bigger it's over nine trillion dollars now the stock market is already having issues interest rates are already on the rise and we are going to be beginning at 47.5 billion dollars and we're going to be doubling that in just another three months this is an unprecedented rate of tightening we've never done this before And the last time when we did a lot less, we broke something. And I just want to put this problem in perspective. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is $9 trillion. Even at this incredibly high rate of tightening that we're about to embark on, it's going to take almost five years to get the Fed's balance sheet back down to pre-COVID levels. And remember the last time when we tightened at a slower rate, we only made it two years before we had to stop and reverse course. It's going to take us five years just to get back to where we were two years ago. That's how big the problem is we want to go even further to say levels before the global financial crisis it's going to take us seven and a half years at this rate of tightening to get down to there and if we want to take the fed's balance sheet all the way back down to zero it's going to take eight and a half years at this 95 billion dollar a month pace to get there so even at this unprecedented rate of quantitative tightening it's going to take close to a decade to solve this problem that easy money has created over decades and decades of quantitative easing and money printing and i'm going to let you in on a little hint folks something is going to break way way before we get there remember last time it only took two years to break something well this time the debt pile is even bigger you see as we're tightening as we're shrinking the supply of money but the demand of money is staying the same the price of money is going up and that price of money is interest rates we have a debt-based economy we have trillions of dollars in the national debt we have trillions of dollars in business debt trillions of dollars in mortgage debt hundreds of billions of dollars in credit card debt all of that debt gets more expensive as we're quantitative tightening And this is happening while we have things like fuel and food and housing is getting more expensive also. So our economy cannot afford what the Federal Reserve is about to do. And unfortunately, they don't really have any choice because if the Fed doesn't do this, the inflation problem is going to continue to spiral out of control. So long story short, folks, today is day one of an experiment in quantitative tightening that, if you ask me, is not going to go very well because you need only look back a couple of years in recent history to see an example of a smaller effort of quantitative tightening failing miserably. And this time around, we're starting with the deck stacked against us. And if you want to know a little more about mortgage-backed securities, one of those assets that the Federal Reserve is going to be rolling off of its balance sheet, you can check out this video I did with the Economic Ninja about how we're already starting to see problems in the mortgage-backed securities market. Until next time, live small and dream big.